Hi all, my name is Davis and welcome back to my channel. So over the past few videos, we've practically unboxed every major Palm release from the Trio 650, the Palm Pre, the Palm Pre 3, and even the HP touchpad. And by now I admit that this obsession is getting a little bit unhealthy and I'm beginning to run out of money. So today we have a phone that might not be quite as influential, but I promise it's just as interesting. And of course, it is the Palm Pixie Plus. Probably best known for being Austin Evans's first smartphone ever. So the Palm Pixie was the follow-up to the original Palm Pre and sort of the budget version of the Pre. At just $99 on a contract on Sprint, it was one of the most affordable smartphones at the time. But among many other failings, it did have one major problem. It did not have Wi-Fi. I mean, what smartphone in 2009 did not have Wi-Fi? But luckily for its wider international launch in 2010, the revised phone which is this one, now dubbed the Palm Pixie Plus, it did manage to score Wi-Fi among zero other changes. And that is the version that we are going to be unboxing today. So looking at the box, it's remarkably similar to the original Palm Pre's with the frosted plastic sleeve, quite minimalistic design. And also most notably, my favorite thing in the entire world on a box, this cut off corner, which allows the phone just to sit like so. On the front of the box, we have an image of the phone in all of its glory. Look at that, so pretty, isn't it? On the left side, we can see that this is indeed the French SFR version of the phone, which means that we have an Azerty keyboard rather than the English QWERTY. And also over here, we've got a ton of accompanying French sentences that I probably won't try to read. Quite interestingly, however, underneath all of that, it says that to configure the phone, that you need either Windows or Mac. Mm. Now, WebOS is famous for being the first mobile operating system to not need a computer to set everything up as everything was in the cloud, so I'm not sure why it's there. Maybe it was copy and pasted from earlier Palm OS devices, but I guess we'll never know. Um, on the other side of the box, um, we have a reminder that it runs Palm's tragically short-lived WebOS operating system. And we can also see that it's got Wi-Fi and also Bluetooth. But as exciting as admiring the box has been, I think it's finally time to unbox the Palm Pixie Plus. So let's remove the plastic. Oh, now we can see the phone nice and clearly on the front. If we compare it to my um, old example over here, we can see that it is indeed, I think it is, oh yes, it is life-size, so that's very cool. Okay, so now let's flip over the lid. Oh my god, it's the Palm Pixie Plus. Look how pretty that is. Oh, look at that. It feels incredible in the hand. Isn't it just adorable? Taking it out of the plastic casing, immediately it feels just so incredibly light in my hands. At less than 100 grams, the Pixie is actually, I think it's one of the lightest smartphones ever made, really living up to its name. Not only that, but the rounded shape and the narrowness of the body really makes it a delight to hold. And um, despite everything being made out of plastic, it also feels reasonably put together too. And it doesn't creak at all, like um, how a lot of plastic smartphones do. Um, in fact, with this replaceable back cover, um, as we can see, I've got the orange one over here versus um, the basic black one over here. The backing basically covers the entirety of the device. So um, you can probably throw it around with reckless abandon and it would be fine. At the very least, it feels a lot better made than the creaky wobbly pre did. Now let's get to my favorite part of the unboxing process, removing the screen protector. Are we ready for it? Okay, three, two, one. Wow, isn't that so good? Okay, so the screen protector actually only covered the top part of the phone. You would have imagined that it would have covered the entire front panel, but you know, it doesn't. So underneath the plastic that we just peeled off is a plastic 2.63 inch capacitive touchscreen with 320 by 400 pixels. While it doesn't sound too impressive today, the size and the pixel density were actually relatively good for the time. To put it into perspective, the old Palm Trio screens used to be called spacious and they were basically the same size 
and um, a little bit lower in resolution. And uh, from my previous experience with the Pixie, I recall that the screen was okay, but it wasn't quite as colorful as the Pre's, and the viewing angles weren't quite as good either. And it also had a noticeable banding issue, especially with subtle gradients, which was a bit unfortunate. Now, underneath the beautiful screen, we have the gesture area. And this was actually the first phone, I believe, um, where they got rid of the home button. So you could just do your gestures without any interruption, which was really good. Underneath the gesture area, we have my favorite part of the phone probably, and it's the keyboard. And this might be a little bit of a controversial opinion, but I actually feel that this is quite possibly the best physical keyboard ever made on a phone. Even uh, better than the BlackBerry Bolt and the Nokia E71 that a lot of people love. I just feel that there's just the perfect yet insane level of clickiness, and the spacebar especially is just so satisfying to press. And it's nice as um, a more spacious keyboard feels, like on a BlackBerry Bold. Your thumbs do have to travel further, which really kind of slows you down occasionally. The Pixies keyboard, on the other hand, is the perfect size. Your thumbs just don't have to travel as far, and it's large enough so that you don't make too many mistakes. Now let's take a look around the phone. So on the left side of the phone, we have nothing. <laughs> on the bottom of the phone, we have Nothing as well. However, on the right side, it's much more interesting because we have the famous palm ringer switch. As we can see though, uh, when on silent, there's a little bit of a red highlight telling you so. And underneath that, we have a set of quite rubbery volume buttons that are actually built into the back casing. So if you destroy them, um, you can just replace it. And underneath that, we have a rubber flap that unveils the micro USB port. And the cover's actually magnetized, so it just locks back into place, which is actually really satisfying. <laughs> and it's way better than the fiddly USB port cover on the Pre that would always break off. It's just, it's actually really fun to play with. Um, on the top of the phone, we have the headphone jack and the power button. Um, like with the Pre, the um, power button's on the corner, but it's on the opposite corner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's see if this, how old is that? This 11 year old phone turns on. Three, two, one. It does turn on. Okay, so most of the phones that we've had so far do turn on. However, the touch, HP touchpad that we unboxed last time did not. So um, it's pretty good how it's still got power after all of those years. So while it turns on, let's take a look at the back of the phone. So we have two speaker grills, and um, despite there being two grills, there's actually only one speaker, so it's a little bit deceiving. Um, in between that we have a, do, do we want to guess? A two megapixel camera with an LED flash. And yes, as bad as that sounds, um, it actually was pretty awful, even for the time. And finally underneath that, there is the Palm logo. And quite interestingly, um, despite this being a rubberized back cover, if you're familiar with the Palm um, phone, this actually is not touchstone compatible. So you can't um, just put this on the touchstone charger and expect it to stay and um, charge. Rather, you had to purchase a separate back cover, like this one over here, um, which are usually dimpled on the Pixies. Um, to use touch dough and get that wireless charging that we all love. Um, to take off the back cover, what you would do is, um, is basically put your fingers around the phone, undo a few clips, and, and basically the whole phone would begin to pop out. What's really good with this back cover design is that it's basically the entire phone is replaceable. All you had to do was have a screen protector and you didn't really need a case at all. It's perfect just to slip in your pocket. Um, underneath here we have the battery and the SIM card, this being the AT&T version. This was the SFR, they both have SIM cards. And um, yeah, let's pop the case back on. Oh yes, here is the inductive charger as well with the coils inside. So let's take a look at the rest of the box. So we just remove this and we've got, we've still got the palm, um, inspired by and designed in California sleeve, which is recyclable. And um, this one still has the folded over corner to the guide. Um, we can slip this little piece of cardboard off. And yes, it folds out like an accordion. 
Um, as we can see, this is all in French. <laughs> yeah, so all of your gestures and uh, information on how to use the phone is in here, but I'm pretty sure by now that we all know how to use WebOS, so let's move on. Underneath that, we have the corrugated cardboard. However, this time, unlike the original Pre, it is in a much duller gray color. Oh, actually, look at this over here. There seems to be some misplaced um, <laughs> um, cards. Okay, this one is a information booklet of some kind. Um, it's very uninteresting as it's all in French. Um, over here is another information slip and then a few more. And, oh, actually, this has some sort of declaration. This Julia is the compliance engineer of Sunnyvale in 2010. So um, that's her signature if you want to forge it. Okay, beyond all that, obviously, is the corrugated cardboard. And then, yes, we've got the traditional Palm micro USB port. Um, we've, got, we've got the little Palm charging brick. This is the EU version. And with the Pixie, we still get the, um, the little headphones. We actually haven't tried these headphones out before, so let's, uh, let's put these on. If I recall, these were similar quality to the Apple one, so uh, pretty mediocre. And yeah, they don't fit in the ear very well. So uh, I'm glad that phones don't come with terrible headphones anymore. Okay, so that was basically the box. But um, if we take a look at the phone now, it's finally booted up. Like with all WebOS phones, or new ones rather, that haven't been activated before. Before, oh, it's just gone to sleep now. Um, the servers have been down for a while, so you have to go through a rather arduous process to get past that. So uh, to demonstrate the performance and the interface, let's look at my old one, so we can see how the Pixie worked. So you press the button to turn it on. That's the lock screen. As we can see, it's a little bit stubbier than the Pre's, but it still works the same. And um, inside the phone, we've got a 600 megahertz processor from Qualcomm. It's actually down clocked to 500 megahertz for some reason. But on this particular example, if I open an app that I downloaded from Homebrew called Governor over here, I've got it overclocked to 800 megahertz. And unlike the painful performance that you got on the stock version, this actually feels relatively snappy. I can just flip between my apps like so. I've got how many apps open? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six apps. Is that six? <laughs> and um, let's try opening another one. So let's try opening, um, what does need internet? Doc view. And it still opens reasonably quickly. Um, let's check out my music. Kevin McLeod, my favorite artist in the world. And um, I assume there is, go yeah, there we go. There's some sound. So performance actually, like a lot of the earlier Palm devices when overclocked is actually pretty reasonable. I mean, sure, the animations aren't exactly smooth, but you sort of needed a WebOS 2 phone for that. And um, despite everything, it still opens up apps and you can switch between them relatively snappily. And um, unlike WebOS 2 phones, um, where you could stack cards together, on WebOS 1, um, when you long press on a card, you've got mini cards. How cute are they? And then you can just organize them like so. Some people actually prefer this system, but I think there's a mod on the HP touchpad at least, where you can have both mini cards and stacks. <laughs> let's return to the previous size. <laughs> Shall we use the camera? Actually, let's see how that looks. So this is a two megapixel camera. Oh, that was me and my brother. And okay. The WebOS camera app did like to glitch occasionally. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of a selfie. You can press the, um, the space bar to take the photo. I think it snapped relatively quickly. So now let's have a look at the photo. Yes, amazing. Um, I think even for 2010 standards, this is pretty mediocre, but um, 
I, it's probably not the worst thing in the world. And um, let's have a look at all the apps open. We've got to remember that it's only got 256 megabytes of RAM, unlike the Palm Pre Plus that came out at the same time. So you can't have a million apps open and expect them to stay open. But if you just stick to around five or so, it feels okay to use. Also, another thing that I haven't touched upon is the, um, the quick wave launch bar. So if I'm just in an app here, I just drag my finger up here like so and I can access any of these apps really quickly. I feel like that this is just another forgotten feature that um, Apple should really copy. It, it's, it's relatively quick, it's not too bad at all and then you just throw your apps away like that. And there's the lag. Using this phone now, I actually feel the hardware and the form factor is so good. It's actually a bit of a shame how this was the final incarnation of the candy bar style phone for Palm. After creating so many with the Trio line and also the Central, it just feels so good in the hand and so fun to use. And by the, um, the BlackBerry Key 2 and at a stretch the Unihertz Titan, there aren't exactly many modern equivalents. Um, after the Pixi Plus, Palm brought out the Veer, which is this phone over here. And while it is also incredibly cute, I've always felt that the Pixie had the superior and more ergonomic form factor, despite it not looking quite as adorable. Um, they actually had identical screens, so all of the problems that we had for the Pixie screen carried over to the Veer, but the Veer had a, a glass covering. It would have been really great to see the Pixie upgraded with the Veer internals with the WebOS 2 operating system and also the slightly faster 800 megahertz processor and 512 megabytes of RAM. But which team are you on? Team Pixie or Team Veer? Tell me in the comments below. And that basically brings me to the end of this video. If you made it this far, be sure to give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's also a link to all of my palm unboxings that I've done at the top. And until next time, toodaloo.